Hi, welcome to the, um, I guess this is the um, second lecture of WebLab. We're going to talk about the basics of HTML and CSS. So um, you can, I guess to start, you can think of HTML as sort of the bones of your website and CSS as like the pretty skin outer layer of your website. So this is essentially the core makeup of um, of your website that you're all going to be um, interacting with. So HTML, uh, we, uh, it was mentioned uh, briefly earlier, but um, what does it stand for? What does it mean? What does it do, et cetera? Uh, well, obviously it stands for high tech machine learning. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it stands for hypertext markup language. And in other words, it's the language that your web browser uses to describe the content and the structure of your web page. Uh, I said you can think of it as, as the bones of your web page. Uh, you can think of it as like a skeleton of your web page. It's essentially uh, the, the core structure. Um, you can also visualize it as, um, um, as nested boxes um, within each other. So if we go to, um, an example website such as XKCD. Um, one mm -hmm. second, I'm gonna. You didn't see this. Um, if, if we go to an example website such as XKCD, uh, we can use that uh, nested box concept as a way to um, describe the HTML structure of this website. Um, so uh, let's uh, quickly uh, try doing this uh, live on Zoom. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a hint. Um, the, the first nested box is, is this, the, the, the whole big box of all the content. And um, we're going we're gonna to try using the annotate feature. If, if this becomes a mess, then uh, we'll quickly mm -hmm. stop trying to use it. But um, if you're able to, uh, try and annotate some more of the boxes on, on, on the screen of XCCD. Yeah, that's, that's good. It, there's one box. Yeah, there's another. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, this main box of the content of the page. And <laughs> yes, this box. Yeah, we. Are, I see some boxes for all the buttons here. Um, you can add some boxes on the title here and the links and the in the home page. Okay, <laughs> you guys get the idea. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna um, uh, clear the annotations. <laughs> and uh, I I'll show you a oh, oh no. All right, all right, stop drawing. <laughs> stop drawing now. <laughs> um, yeah. We will. Uh, yeah, so you can also uh, make another box of the internal content um, of the web page, so not including the background. Um, and if you go further, you could make boxes for the navbar, uh, as, as some of you drew out, boxes for the title um, title heading area, and then boxes for the uh, for the content, the comic. And we could go further, make boxes for each individual link, um, divide the content into two here. And we can go even further and further and further to to each individual button here. So uh, let's let's go to code now. So I have pulled up this uh, example HTML file um, named hello.html, and we're going to go through the uh, the structure of um, or the each part of the file uh, one by one. So um, yeah. If we wanted to render this um, this file onto onto a website or onto our, into our in our web browser, sorry, um, this would um, be how it would look like. So you can see we have the heading and paragraph showing up here. Um, so we're going to go through um, go through it all. If we go, if uh, the first line here is. <laughs> Whoever's putting the arrow around, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a fun game, but not now. Um, yeah, if if we go to the first slide, um, 
you see this uh, doc type HTML thing here. And uh, basically, this is sort of telling the web browser, hey, uh, this website is using the latest HTML, so we don't need to use any fallback. Um, it's just like just like a, a reassurance line. Uh, it's pretty important, but there's not much to it. But after that, uh, we have what's called uh, the root element um, marked by these tags that say HTML. And uh, this is where uh, all the stuff you're going to add to your website will, um, will end up in. And, um, and then we can go one level further um, later. But first, uh, I'm, uh, I mentioned this word element. Um, so uh, this is basically what an HTML element is. It is composed of an opening tag and a closing tag. And then in the middle of these tags uh, is where your content is going to go. So uh, if we take that nested box concept again, we could describe all the elements on our hello.html page. So you can see we have this big box for this root element, which is for everything on our, all the information and content on our website. And then we have boxes for this head element, a box for this body element, and then boxes for everything in between. Um, yeah, yeah, everything um, inside each of these uh, main elements here. Uh, in addition, um, there's a certain, a certain um, structure to how you uh, format these tags. So uh, I, I said that, um, I keep saying this word nested boxes. Um, these boxes cannot intersect with one another. So. Um, you can't have, um, uh, just like in math, where you have like parentheses to, to separate different parts of your um, equation. Uh, you can't, uh, each opening parentheses must follow, must be followed by a closing parentheses eventually. And you can't have this sort of intersection of, 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 of um, priority of elements here. And then if we go one level uh, deeper into our HTML file, um, we have uh, our head element I mentioned earlier and our body element. So if we go to our head element first, um, the head element is basically the background information of your website. Um, it, um, it has a bunch of, it can have a bunch of metadata about your website that could be used by, um, by uh, bots or search engines that are um, looking for your website. And it also, in our case, it contains this uh, additional element here, uh, which is the title element, which displays the text that shows up in your tab bar on your browser. And you can see that here. Um, also, on our slides, this would be the title. This will be in the title element of this website. In our body, uh, in our body element, we have. Uh, this is where uh, you'll probably be interacting the most um, when you're uh, uh, coding HTML, because this is where all the content that is shown visually to the um, to the users of your website will be um, nested under. So you can see here we have um, we have our heading and paragraph in our holiday HTML file, and you can also see here uh, in our um, example XACD page this first red big box that. Uh, we drew on, we drew first would be the body element here. So, and then uh, we we can go further or deeper. We can go deeper into our uh, individual parts of the body element. So here we have an we have an element for a heading um, marked by this H one, and we could, and there's like. Uh, H1 just saying that this is the highest priority heading on on this page, and it says heading here. You can see it here, and then we have another element, another box for our paragraphs, uh, marked by these uh, P tags at, at the uh, opening and closing. So that's our uh, that's an overview of our hello.html file, and uh, as you can see. Um, all the stuff that is showing up here is not in these little tags. There, um, we we've labeled them as white here. So everything that is not in these uh, in these tags will show up as text on your website. 
so I mentioned a bunch of these uh, HTML tags. Here's, another, here's just a uh, uh, one page summary of these and uh, what they're about. So we have the root of our HTML document and then the head contains the info, the metadata about our document. The body is where you'll be interacting the most because it has all the visual content in our document. And then we have header tags for different, level, different levels of headings. And we have paragraph tags for, for the big blocks of text. And then we have this uh, little uh, new tag I didn't mention earlier called div that we're going to um, get to talking more about. Um, but you can think of it as a sort of generic um, generic box if you just want a blank box for, your, for, your, um, for the content that you're trying to create. And the first. Uh, the first three that you can see here are uh, pretty much essential for any HTML page that you're going to make. Um, you'll always see these, uh, these elements. All right, so uh, we talked about the basic, um, we talked about HTML elements, we talked about the basic uh, tags you can use, but you can go further and uh, add what are called attributes to modify um, things about uh, things about your element here. So we have our uh, uh, example element from earlier. Uh, what we can do is uh, add to the opening tag an attribute. So the first um, thing you see here, the ABC is the name of the attribute. And then we set it equal to the value that we want the attribute to be. And this will apply the attribute to everything that um, is in the content um, nested under, nested in our element. Now, for example, one um, one purpose that we would have for using the attribute feature is for inserting links to our uh, page. So we would use uh, what's called the anchor element marked by these um, a tags, and uh, if you and you'd use that to produce a link that looks something like this, that'll lead to the Web Lab website, and um, to use the um, to use the anchor element. Uh, we would add an attribute, as you can see here. The attribute is um, is uh, spelled as href, um, sort of our external reference. And then in the value here, we would put the link to wherever we want to go to. And so that would make anything in the content when we, when the user clicks on it um, lead to whatever this link is. Um, so for leading to the Web Lab website, um, this would uh, be the example code that we're looking at. So you can see we have the, H the, um, the URL here and then the text here and the text corresponds to the text that we show here. And when you click on this, it will lead to the Web Lab website. Another use for um, HTML attributes is for interacting with the image uh, element. Um, used to add images to our website and marked by these IMG tags. So in this case, we would use um, the source attribute, SRC, set it equal to whatever our image is named, pushy not diff, in this example. And we would um, end it with a closing tag, except uh, you don't necessarily have to use this type of closing tag. Uh, since um, for images, we typically don't have text in the content in the way that we think of it, uh, you can instead uh, move that slash in the closing tag into the opening tag, such like this, and then create what's called a self-closing tag. And uh, this would be uh, all the code you'll need to put to insert your image onto your website, and you get something like this when you open your browser. Now, uh, for the source attribute, this assumes a file structure that is that looks like this, where your um, image, the pushin.gif, is on the same level folder um, as your HTML file. Um, but if we wanted to be more organized and maybe add an image folder to store all of our images, um, then to uh, to reference an image in our image folder, uh, we would uh, instead put the um, put the name of the folder, the images, first, and then add a slash, and then put in the name of the image that we're uh, referencing, the pushing.gif. Uh, sort of like um, 
how you would use your file manager, file browser on your computer. Um, the syntax uh, works the same way. So uh, back to content, I, I mentioned uh, these tags before, the H1 heading tag, the paragraph box section tag, and this div element that I, that I hinted at. Um, so uh, what we could use div for um, is say we have our, we're back to our hello.html file, and we wanted to modify both of these elements uh, at the same time without uh, repeating uh, typing in the name of the attribute over and over again. Um, so we could, what we could do is we could put all of this into one box and div is perfect for that because uh, when we uh, change our code to using the div element, uh, we could, um, as you can see on our website, nothing has changed visually, but now we could do whatever we want um, and we'd only need to put one attribute into div and it would apply to all of these. So yes, uh, div has made another greater box um, for our for our heading and paragraph. And yeah, I I, I mentioned uh, numerous tags um, from headings to paragraphs to div, and there are many more that you'll uh, you'll see around and interact with and, and want to research. But don't worry, there is no need to memorize everything um, because. Um, we have this wonderful thing called the internet. So uh, what web devs uh, really use um, is called Google. So if you wanted to look up something, um, something new that you saw, or maybe you're looking for a, a, an element um, for your, uh, for an application that you haven't um, implemented before, um, you're, you know, the first step is going to be to uh, to uh, maybe maybe you are looking for what span does so you can type into your search engine uh, HTML span and you get a bunch of results and then uh, you could pick one and read a bit about it and you see that oh uh, span has no meaning at all and you could read more about what span um, really is about um, by looking through these results. Uh, but if searching randomly on the internet isn't your cup of tea, then there is one website you should have on the back of your hand, or I should say you should have bookmarks and have on hand. And it's called MDN. Um, and MDN is a, uh, is a great reference for all things HTML and CSS and even some JavaScript um, when we talk about that. And it and um, it's const it's constantly updated. Um, at least uh, as of last year, there was a dedicated team of, of Mozilla developers that kept this website up to date. So it keeps up with the rapidly changing nature of of um, of like of internet and web development. So this is why it's it's a very good resource to like, to um, keep on hand. Um, yes, MDN is is great. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, W3 schools, uh, not so much. Um, you might see it pop up. In fact, you might have seen it in the previous slides. It's, it's usually the um, first result that you see on, on Google or whatever, but uh, we don't recommend it. And the main reason we don't recommend it is that it's not as updated as MDN. Um, it it um, references some sometimes like old ways of implementing things. It's just not the... Um, not the most modern way of, of web development um, can be found on, on W3 tools. So use MDN, um, you won't regret it. All right, so I, I mentioned div at the end there. Um, and I mentioned that div is, uh, is, a, is a generic container. It doesn't have anything, um, any like special things like heading or anything. Um, so you might think, oh, it's a blank slate. I can just do whatever I want with div. So I can just use div everywhere and then use attributes to, um, to um, modify each individual element. And so you might come to this conclusion that I should just, just use div and, and you find a, 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 forehead, a, a forehead approach to web development. But um, 
I'm going to ask, why could this be bad? Uh, type your answers in the chat box below. I, I might not have given you many hints, but like that was on purpose, the brainstorm. You could brainstorm a bit. All right, yeah, Access accessibility, not descriptive. It's ambiguous, hard to organize, hard to target, bad style, too cluttered, it's more work, um, can't customize CSS. Um, I, I see a lot of good answers and uh, a lot of stuff that I actually uh, cover um, very soon. Um, yeah, um, so, I like the accessibility answer, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on um, at the start. Um, the the block versus inline is um, well. I guess uh, spoiler alert: uh, span is like sort of the inline version of div, um, but that's not necessarily what I was um, aiming for, uh, because um, uh, you'll see in like CSS you can sort of modify that. Um, and there are like different inline elements and different um, um, block elements that you could use. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, bring up my uh, my reasons for why my big reasons why this could be bad. So If we go to the MDN page on div, uh, MDN, our favorite website, uh, you might see a few things when you're reading through it. Um, first off, it says, as a pure container, div, the, uh, the div element does not inherently represent anything. Um, and then you scroll down a bit and you see under usage notes that the div element should only be used when no other semantic element, such as article or nav, is appropriate. And then you see um, a bit, it suggests other options such as um, section, header, footer. And uh, basically it's saying there, there might be better, better options, but um, what does, I, I highlighted this word semantic and uh, you might be familiar with it in other contexts and it's about the same in this context. Uh, semantic just means, um, just means like the meaning of the element and um, like the definition of the element. So like, like the header would be like where your header is. Um, semantic is just like the underlying, underlying definition. So why do we need to be semantic in web dev? Um, why are there, why, why the semantic elements exist? So, um, yeah, I, um, I, I was hinting that accessibility is, big, is a big part of it. And yeah, so I have like two, uh, two examples of like accessibility reasons. And my first one is screen readers. Um, so people who are um, blind or visually impaired in some fashion so very much use the internet, probably as much as we all do. And if you've ever used um, a public forum or, or YouTube comments or, or I guess um, maybe YouTube comments sometimes. And um, I was thinking more like Reddit. Um, I see Reddit a lot. There's a lot of bl uh, blind or visually impaired people who use Reddit a lot. Um, and you probably would have interacted with them um, um, at some point if you've ever uh, posted a comment on Reddit. But they use these things called screen readers. And this is just like a very um, a brief glimpse on what they do. Um, let's see if this video plays. Uh, let's also check if I'm sharing something. I am. In all the technology. Alt menu, application menu, and, show all. Uh, bookmarked a few websites. Type form for the intercept survey month, smashing mass.gov. Bruce Lawson site, I'm 9 of 14. Bruce first, since he very bravely volunteered his website. Enter, so. leaving menus about land, oh. land. Bruce Lawson's personal site, Mozilla Firefox. Bruce Lawson's personal site, 27 regions, 21 headings, and 187 links. Bruce Lawson's personal site, visited heading level 1 link, Bruce Lawson's Lawson's. So I'm going to stop that there. First thing you learn. So um, as you can hear, it's a, it's a lot of, it's very fast speaking um, words or fast speaking voice, but you can hear it, it. When you load a website, it says, oh, this, there's this many headings. And um, it, and then it says, oh, what this heading is, is um, what this heading says, what the content of it is. Um, 
and then it it, it just very audibly and, and quickly goes through um, what each part of the website is um, is for, and um, what the what the meaning of each um, each section is that that um, that normally with people who are not visually impaired would be able to catch from a glimpse of of the website. Um, so it's very important for for um, those people and, and understanding the internet. Um, in addition, I, I mentioned uh, keyboard navigation, um, and I brought up the example: Why can you, uh, when you're signing up for a an account on a website, why can you just hit tab to um, hit to go through um, each box and fill out each box without moving your mouse? And that's because there's a um, semantic HTML element for that um, that allows you to hit tab and reach the next section, and it's the quickest way of doing that um, of of making of of uh, making that feature in all the technology. Okay. Uh, another, a uh, few more reasons. Um, it makes your website uh, more machine readable in the sense that um, it's more friendly to web crawlers, which means that your site will become more discoverable and um, will appear in more searches often because uh, search engines will know what your website is about and uh, what results to point at your website uh, based on how it's organized. And addition, it also makes it more human readable, easier to maintain in the future. Uh, in the case of someone who is not, the hypothetical case of someone who's not one of the founders of your website um, is brought on board to help maintain it. Uh, the semantic HTML elements can um, help them get up to speed and understanding what the website is all about. So yes, um, there are many more reasons I'm sure, but like I think these are some very clear reasons for using semantics. So um, TLDR, uh, don't just use div. MDN is your friend because there might be a better option out there that um, gives, uh, that may um, be able to give you more opportunities to put more information on your website for all sorts of people um, and, and all sorts of uh, machines as well. <laughs> So, yes, MDN is your friend. Bookmark it right now. <laughs> and that's an overview of HTML, the hypertext markup language. Um, it's, it's your It's it's the bones of your um, of your website and the skeleton of your website. So it's important to have an understanding of this when developing the core structure of your website. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move to CSS now. Um, anyone have any burning questions that, that they want to ask um, before I blitz on to CSS? Okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. So. CSS, what does this stand for? Uh, I'm not gonna give you the chance to answer. I'm just gonna give it to, to you right away. I think um, Dan mentioned it actually, but yes, it stands, stands for cascading style sheets. In other words, it's the rules that tell your browser how stuff looks. So now we're talking about the visuals of your website as opposed to just the structure. Uh, so in other words, the CSS is a list of descriptions. Uh, so if we go to any old website, um, I picked out the Discord homepage, and um, we take a look at it. Um, you uh, you can see that I guess uh, it might not be obvious how important CSS is from first glance, but all this structure is is uh, is um, made by CSS. And when we when we strip out the CSS, you get this mess. Um, this is an image of, of somewhere in the background. And, um, and this is, um, yeah, it, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, CSS uh, does a lot. It can do a lot. And yes, CSS is a list of descriptions. And uh, work, in, work and coding time put into CSS can go a long way in making your website look pretty. Oh. Now let's get into what CSS looks like, I guess how the code of CSS looks like. Uh, so the, uh, 
so this is an example of a CSS rule set. And you might see upon first glance, this is almost nothing like HTML. And that's true. So these are two separate um, languages. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so I, we have an example rule set. Uh, it's composed of a, a selector in the, at the beginning. And this is, uh, this is telling the website, what, is, what are these rules going to be applied onto? And in this case, it's going to apply, be applied onto all the divs on your website, all the div elements. And then inside um, our list of rules, uh, each rule has a property, which in this uh, first case is the font color. And then it has a value for that property, which in this case is red. So what this rule is doing is that it's going to go through, go to all the divs and make the font color red. And that, um, that same structure goes down, um, uh, stays consistent throughout all your, all your rules in, this, in a rule set. So if we go back to our hello.html page, um, you can see we re replaced the, the piece here with divs. Uh, just the, this is just for the sake of the example. Um, but if we uh, just focus on our body elements, uh, we, we see that we have uh, two elements here. We can add a third one, um, also using divs that we can maybe say is for info. And then if we apply our uh, style sheet, our CSS style sheet onto our HTML page that we just, uh, the style sheet that we described earlier or the, ru the rule set that we described earlier, uh, you can see it has made all everything in the divs in our div elements. Um, it's made everything in div elements red. It is with or the font of everything of the color of the font and everything in our div elements red. It has made the font into Arial and it has made the font size in a, into 24 point, um, which uh, you ought to believe me, this is 24 point font. Uh, yeah. Uh, with CSS, uh, there are a few different attributes you could use directly. Uh, one is called class, and um, we set the value to the name of the class. And so in this example, if we've created an info class, just in our um, div element, um, and then if we change the selector to a, uh, to say info with a dot at the beginning to, to tell, the, um, tell the browser that this is for a class, this is a selector for a class. And we leave everything the same. So um, all the rules are the same. You can see that the rules only get applied to this info div here. There also is an attribute called ID and um, we have created replace the class with the ID here of unique. And in the CSS, we've uh, replaced the selector with one called unique with a pound sign or a hashtag at the beginning, whatever you want to call it. And uh, this signifies that this is an ID. And it has also made only the info um, text here have this formatting. So it looks like they do the same thing. Um, but there, there actually is some underlying differences between IDs and classes. So IDs, um, an element can only have one ID while an element in your HTML can have multiple classes. And uh, what that sort of looks like is in your example div, uh, if you add an ID and say, this is an ID, uh, this is the only ID that this element can have, but you can have multiple classes in your element um, separated by spaces or the names of the classes separated by spaces and all three of these classes would, a, would apply onto your element. In addition, uh, IDs must be unique in any given HTML document, but you can use the same class on multiple elements. So in other words, an element can only have one ID and an ID can only uh, be, be applied to one element. Uh, what if you use two classes that set two different values of the same attribute? Uh, I believe, uh, if we go back to here, I believe the class that you put first gets priority. Um, so whatever the attribute is um, that you just specify here uh, will get priority. I, 
I don't quite remember. I think it's I think it's the first one. Yeah. Um, so what? Uh, and also, there's the syntax differences that I uh, that way I mentioned earlier. So it starts with the with the pound hashtag for ID, and it starts with the dot or period for for classes. And otherwise, the syntax is the same. The rules will look the same. Uh, can we use ID and class at the same time? Yes, you can. Um, yeah. And we recommend that we that you for your websites that you only use CSS styling, or you only use classes for CSS styling. Uh, a big reason why you only use classes is is that part where you can use classes multiple times across your code. So it it's a it's a lot cleaner way for for reapplying formatting on multiple different areas of your code. All right. uh, another important concept is that uh, you might have um, you might have noticed that in our hello.html example that the uh, the element with the h1 tags look different from with the element with the look different from the element with the p tag or the, or the div tag later on and that's because tags such as h1 have some default styling uh, it looks kind of like this um the this is kind of the i think yeah this is the default styling for h1 well the default styling for div just tells the uh, tells your browser that this is a block element um but have no fear any custom applied CSS rules, whether it's whether it's to your class or, or an ID, if, if you want to go against our advice, um, it'll over it'll overwrite it. Um, so don't worry. Um, you could you can change any of these um, on on your end. All right. So we have our HTML and we have our CSS, but and I mentioned that they are two very separate um, coding languages. But how do we combine them now? Uh, well, if we go back to our hello.html um, and we go into our head element, there's a uh, thing, there's an element that we have to add. It's called the link element and uh, it has two main attributes. One of them is the relation. In this case, we're adding a style sheet. So we put style sheet in the value. <laughs> and then there's an href um, that you saw before. Um, the location of the style sheet. So we put uh, the name of the style sheet here. Um, note that this is completely different from the anchor element with the A tags. And so you should not use link when you're creating hyperlinks to, to different websites or different parts of your website. Um, this is for linking. You know, in this case, we use it for linking our style, our style sheet to our HTML file. So in conclusion, HTML, you can think of it as, um, as nested boxes. And CSS, you can think of it as a uh, list of descriptions for those boxes. And what that means is a uh, description in the CSS affects a box in the HTML. 